Over the last few years, the VaporMax has become one of Nike's most popular models, and they've continued to innovate on that silhouette to make it even better than the year before. Now to be fair, even though every year they try and make the sneaker better, sometimes they do something to the sneaker that actually makes it a little bit worse, and I think that's kind of what happened last year. Although I thought overall the Nike VaporMax 2020 was a pretty solid improvement over the year before as VaporMax, there was one large change that I really think held the sneaker back. But last week, Nike released the latest version of the VaporMax for 2021 and has seemed to have solved that problem. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Nike VaporMax 2021. Thanks so much for tuning in today, I really appreciate you watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below if you haven't yet and you want to see more reviews just like this and also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But in today's video, like I said, we're reviewing the brand new Nike VaporMax 2021, which overall does seem like a somewhat iterative improvement over the previous VaporMax, but there are a few changes on this sneaker that in my opinion make this shoe significantly better than any VaporMax before it. But before we dive any deeper into the video, if you guys want to grab a pair of the Nike VaporMax 2021s for yourself, they have a retail price of $200 and I've made sure to leave a link to this pair in the description below. However, if you don't mind having last year's version or a version from maybe a couple years ago, there are a lot of different pairs on sale and I've made sure to leave those pairs linked in the description below as well. But diving back into the sneaker itself, at first glance, the shoe looks very similar to last year's VaporMax 2020. The first VaporMax released back in 2016, and the model remained relatively unchanged up until last year, 2020. It's actually pretty similar to what car manufacturers do. They release a car in a certain body styling. That body styling stays relatively unchanged for about four years, and then they switch things up pretty dramatically, even though it's technically the same car. And that's pretty much exactly what happened with the Nike VaporMax. The shoe remained relatively unchanged for about four years. Then in 2020, they switched things up pretty dramatically, focused on sustainability and decided to change the shape of the shoe and make it look a lot more futuristic and a lot more, I guess, speedy looking or wedge shaped. Now, to be honest, even though I didn't love the way that the original VaporMax felt on foot, I kind of actually preferred the aesthetics and the styling of that shoe. I felt the shape of the body of the shoe was just a little bit cleaner. That said, in most other respects, I really prefer the VaporMax 2020 and the 2021 because I think overall it's a more comfortable and more wearable sneaker. But interestingly enough, even though the 2021 VaporMax is very similar to the 2020s when it comes to silhouette styling, the actual sneaker itself does have one pretty major change. And weirdly enough, the biggest change took place on the lacing system of the shoe, and rather than trying to create something even more futuristic than they created last year on the VaporMax 2020s, they reverted back to relatively standard laces, which I've got to say, I'm so happy that they did, because these laces are way better. But before we get into that, let's talk about some of the materials that make up the VaporMax 2021s. So according to Nike, the VaporMax 2021 is made up of 40% recycled materials by weight, which is basically a fancy way of saying that 40% of the overall weight of this shoe is recycled materials, not 40% of the sneaker. In fact, I'm sure most of the weight of this sneaker comes from the midsole, outsole, and heel cap, and to be fair, a lot of those details are actually pretty heavily recycled. Starting off from the front of the sneaker, the tip of the toe is covered by this plastic toe cap, which actually does provide some nice durability. As you move up from that on the toe of this sneaker, you find this really nice gray and blue colored fly knit material, which actually covers a majority of the upper. So as I'm sure you know, fly knit's been around for, it seems like forever at this point, but it's one of those knit materials that just never seems to go out of style. It's very lightweight, it's very breathable, and it feels great on your foot. Now as far as recycled materials go, I'm not sure what percentage of this fly knit material is made up of recycled materials, if any, who knows? It does kind of seem like Nike's trying to imply that there's some recycled materials in the upper with these sort of multicolor speckles that you can sort of see close up, but I'm honestly not sure. I wouldn't be surprised. They use a lot of recycled polyester, but who knows? As you move back on the shoe to the midfoot, you find this stitched on Nike swoosh that comes in this really nice white material and in my opinion pops very nicely. But then we get to the tongue and the lacing system of the VaporMax 2021. And like I said, this is the largest change between the VaporMax 21 and the VaporMax 2020. And the reason this is such a big change is that on the VaporMax 2020, the shoe actually featured this weird sort of like pull lacing system where you pull the tab in the back of the shoe and it tightened the upper of the shoe without you actually having to tie the sneaker. If I'm remembering that right, there was some sort of like weird pulley system in the center of the tongue that like showed you these tiny little thin wires that pulled together and tightened the upper of the shoe. It was a weird system. I didn't love it because it didn't always tighten the shoe that well. And the way you had to untie the sneaker was by pulling the, I think the pull tab on the back of the tongue. It was kind of a weird system. It didn't always work for me. It kind of felt like I was going to bust out of the shoe every so often. Not only that, I felt like it was not the 
the most durable solution. I felt like if one of those wires had gotten cut that were holding the upper of the shoe together, the shoe would just be broken forever. You couldn't just replace the laces. But it seems like on the VaporMax 2020, Nike actually listened to us, which to be fair, they do on a pretty regular basis, so kudos to you, Nike, but they gave us a standard lacing system, which I honestly much prefer. Not only does this lacing system give you a more customizable fit, but it's just simpler and it's easier to use. And if you rip the laces, you just put in a new set of laces. It's really easy. Now I've gotta say, there is one very, very cool thing that Nike did that's super subtle that I didn't even notice till I got these shoes in hand, but that's the fact that as you move up on the laces, the laces switch from a standard oval lace to a flat lace where you tie them, which I think is incredible. I've never actually seen that done on a pair of laces before. I'm sure it's not like a new thing, but it's super, super cool. And the reason I think it's so cool is because oval laces are great for tightening the sneaker. They just seem to work well for that. And flat laces are great for tying because sometimes oval laces slip out of a knot more easily than flat laces do. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but they do. So essentially Nike gave us the best of both worlds. They gave us the oval laces in the part where it mattered and the flat laces in the part where we actually tie the shoe, which I think is incredible. So huge shout out to Nike. It's such a simple change, but in my opinion, it makes such a huge difference. Both the new lacing system and the laces. I think the laces are incredible. In fact, the laces might be my favorite part of this sneaker. The laces weave through these white wires that run along the sides of the tongue, and those wires are actually stitched onto this piece of nylon material, which seems to give the shoe a little bit more added durability. Then underneath the laces, Nike has reverted back to older VaporMax styles once again. Last year's version had sort of a padded tongue with some recycled foams in it. This time around, they're just going for a thin flyknit tongue, which I'm actually not mad at. While I didn't mind the 2020's tongue, it actually had this very sharp edge, which I didn't love. The 2021's version is just your standard flyknit edge, which is actually a little bit softer and doesn't cut into your foot. Not that the 2020 cut into my foot that much, but this is definitely an improvement, at least in my opinion. Then around the top of the ankle, you've got this nice soft fly knit collar. And moving inside the sneaker, you've got this nice padded heel area, which is actually separate from the fly knit on the upper and is a nice improvement that I believe was also on the VaporMax 2020. If you look back on some of the previous VaporMaxes from like 2018 and 2016, those shoes just had pretty much pure fly knit all the way around your foot. So there wasn't really too much heel padding at all. And it seems like in the 2020 version and now in the 2021 version, they've updated that and given you more padding around the heel, which personally I appreciate because it just feels better on foot. Then inside the sneaker, you've got this gray insole with the Nike logo and this cool sort of pinwheel configuration, which I actually kind of dig. And then if you look at the back of the insole, you'll notice that the entire insole is actually made up of recycled foams, which I think is super cool. As far as sizing and fit is concerned, the Nike VaporMax 2021 fits relatively true to size and very similarly to the Nike VaporMax 2020. However, just like some of the previous Vapor Maxes, it is still a very narrow shoe, which is kind of unfortunate for wide-footed people. I don't think it's the best wide-footed friendly sneaker, so if you're a wide-footer, maybe don't go with a pair of Vapor Maxes or try them on and see if you can deal with it. I actually don't mind the fit, but that's probably because I have narrow feet. But uh, overall, the Vapor Max is not one of my favorite sneakers. I'll get into that in a little bit, but um, not a bad shoe. Should fit you true to size. Nike is a great return policy. If you don't like the fit, you can just return it and buy another one or just return it and don't get anything else. You have a lot of options. Then continuing back in the sneaker, you've got this TPU heel clip, which apparently is made up of primarily recycled materials, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty much the same shape as the 2020's heel clip. It still features the Vapor Max logo pressed into the heel. The one difference is that it doesn't feature that sort of weird pull tab thing. And it also comes in one color versus like the crazy multicolor that was in last year's version. I think all of those things are good improvements and I'm pretty happy with the look of the sneaker and the style of the sneaker overall. Then moving down on the shoe, you get to the namesake of the Nike VaporMax and that's the VaporMax Air Unit. So the Air Unit on the bottom of the Nike VaporMax 2021 is almost identical to that of the VaporMax 2020s, which I think is a huge improvement because it's a lot less unstable. It also features a sort of different Air Unit configuration, which I don't mind. And of course, you've got recycled materials on these rubber panels on the heel and along the sides of the forefoot. Now, unfortunately, just like the 2020 version, I still don't think the VaporMax 2021 is that comfortable of a sneaker. There's still something about this midsole that makes me feel unstable when I wear it. And I know it's better overall than any of the previous VaporMaxes. Well, I guess it's the same as the VaporMax 2020, but I felt like that was a big improvement over any of the previous VaporMaxes. But I've got to say, it's still not a shoe that I find myself wearing on a regular basis. It still feels like I'm a little bit wobbly. When I go up and down stairs, these edges still sometimes catch. It's a weird sneaker because of that midsole 
console. Not only that, the air units are not incredibly comfortable. They don't feel like React, they don't feel like a foam. You do get some nice bounce in them, like you feel a little bit bouncy, but you don't feel like you're landing on a super soft cushion. And for me, this air unit still makes me feel like I'm walking on cleats. Like I really hate that feeling. And you get used to it the more that you wear it like throughout the day, but it's still like not the most comfortable experience in the world. While I love the flying it upper, while I love the new lacing system, the air unit still just kind of ruins it for me. I don't think it's a bad air unit and I'm sure there's people out there, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there because this is such a popular sneaker that love this midsole and air unit, but it's not for me. And uh, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, but the Vapor Max is just not a shoe that I could really see myself wearing on a regular basis. I will say though that I love the technology that went into this sneaker. I think the actual tech behind this air unit is cool. I think that it is a very bouncy sneaker and if you like that sort of bouncy feeling, which for me is kind of novel, like that's great. I love sort of bouncing in this shoe, but it's just not a shoe that I'd want to walk around in every single day. And I guess that sort of leads into the conclusion of this video. I think overall the VaporMax 2021 is definitely a solid improvement over the VaporMax 2020. While I liked that they were trying something different with the VaporMax 2020, I'm glad that they were willing to revert back to something that actually worked in the VaporMax 2021. And I think overall, it's not a bad looking sneaker. I prefer the styling of like the VaporMax from 2016. I think the original VaporMaxes were the best ones that they dropped, at least visually. But for 200 bucks, the VaporMax is not a shoe that I really see myself wearing on a regular basis. And I don't know if it's worth it for that price point. If you like the way it feels, sure, grab it. There's a lot of people out there who love this sneaker and will grab it regardless. I personally think if you want a pair of VaporMaxes, Try and grab a pair on sale, maybe a pair of the older models. While they're not as stable overall as this pair, at least for me, I think they look better. And I think you can probably grab a pair for like 120 bucks and save yourself like $80. I just feel like 200 bucks is too much for this shoe. I love the fact that it's got recycled materials. I think that's great. There's a lot of good things to say about this sneaker is what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of good about this shoe. And if you like the VaporMax, great. But for me personally, it's not a shoe that I, uh, I really feel like I need. There you go, that's the most unbiased I can be. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the Nike VaporMax 2021 and whether you're planning to grab a pair for yourself or maybe whether you already did grab a pair for yourself. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.